Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Welcome home to Most Precious Blood Catholic Church. Before our celebration begins, please take a moment to silence your cell phones. Thank you. Father Glenn Lopez will be presiding over our celebration today, and Deacon Dave will be assisting. Again, as our masses get more and more full, we ask you to please fill all available seating by the size of your group and just help us to, to move uh, the chairs minimally. Uh, they do get to be a mess by the end of the weekend, uh, so any help is appreciated there. Communion will be served from the center aisle only, and we ask that as you come up to receive communion, just be aware of how you want to handle your mask um, so that you don't end up having to juggle the Eucharist and your mask at the same time. So just think about how you want to handle that. And of course, once Mass is over, we ask you to please clear the space. Please take a moment of silence and prayer. At this time, please stand and face the rear of the church for the beginning of our celebration. Good evening, everyone. So, this is special mass because we have a little baby, beautiful baby. We welcome to our community, to God's church. So we begin in the name of the Father and of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. My dear parents, Kansas and Adam, your family has experienced great joy at the birth of your child, and the church shares your happiness. Today, this joy has brought you to the church to give thanks to God for the gift of your child and to celebrate a new birth in the waters of baptism. This community rejoices with you, for today the number of those baptized in Christ will be in increased, and we offer you our support in raising your child in the practice of the faith. Therefore, brothers and sisters, let us now prepare ourselves to participate in this celebration, listening to God's word, praying for this child and his family or her family, and renew our commitment to the Lord and to his people. My dear parents, what name do you give your child? Trinity. Trinity. And what do you ask of God's church for Trinity baptism? In asking for baptism, your child, Trinity, you are under, understand, you're undertaking the responsibility of raising her in faith so that keeping God's commandments, she may love the Lord and her neighbor as Christ has taught us. Do you understand this responsibility? And are you, my dear godparents, are you ready to help the parents of Trinity uh, in their duty as parents. We are. Trinity, the Church of God receives you with great joy. In the name of Christ, I sign, I, I sign you with the sign of the cross uh, in your forehead, and then the parents and the godparents will repeat after me.
pray. Almighty ever-living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpass the merits and the desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer does not dare to ask. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Let me now sing of my friend, my friend's song concerning his vineyard. My friend had a vineyard on a fertile hillside. He spaded it, cleared it of stones, and planted the choicest vines. Within it, he built a watchtower, and he hewed out a wine press. Then he looked for the crop of grapes but what it yielded was wild grapes. Now, inhabitants of Jerusalem and people of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard than I had not done? Why, when I looked for the crop of grapes, did it bring forth wild grapes? Now, I will let you know what I mean to do with my vineyard. Take away its hedge, give it to grazing. Break through its walls, let it be trampled. Yes, I will make it a ruin. It shall be pruned a hold, but overgrown with thorns and briars. I will command the clouds not to rain upon it. The vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the people of Judah are his cherished plant. He looked for judgment, but see, bloodshed. For justice, but hark, the outcry. 
the word of the Lord. as far as the river. The vineyard of the Lord is a house of Israel, a house of Israel. Why have you broken down its walls so that every passerby plucks its fruit? The boar from the forest lays it waste, and the beasts of the field feed upon it. The vineyard of the Lord is a house of Israel, a house of Israel. Once again, O Lord of hosts, look down from heaven and see Take care of this vine and protect what your right hand has planted, the Son of Man whom you yourself has made. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel, the house of Israel. from you. Give us new life and we will call upon your name. O Lord God of hosts, restore us. If your face shine upon us, then we shall be saved. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel, the house of A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, have no anxiety at all, but in everything. By prayer and petition with thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. Then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds to Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. Then the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, Hear another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a hedge around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a tower. Then he leased it to tenants and went on a journey. When vintage time drew near, he sent his servants to the tenants to obtain the produce. But the tenants seized the servants, and one they beat, another they killed, and a third they stoned. Again, he sent other servants, more numerous than the first ones, but they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, thinking, they will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to one another, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and acquire his inheritance. They seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. What will the owner of the vineyard do to those tenants when he comes? They answered him, He will put those wretched men to a wretched death and lease his vineyard to other tenants, who will give him the produce at the proper time. Jesus said to them, Did you never read in the Scriptures, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? By the Lord has this been done, and it is wonderful in our eyes. Therefore, I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you, and given to a people that will produce its fruit. The Gospel of the Lord. One of my father's favorite sayings, which he told his six children constantly, was you can choose your actions, but you cannot choose the consequences of those actions. What our father was trying to tell us is that we had free will to behave as we chose, but my mom and he would not be there all of our lives to stop us from making bad choices nor could he prevent the consequences that would come from our actions. And I think perhaps that's a great motto for Trinity as she goes up as well. You can choose your actions, but you can't choose the consequence of those actions. The truth of this saying was brought home to me in a rather dramatic way when I was in my early 20s at the Squaw Valley Ski Resort in Lake Tahoe, California. Now, I love to ski, and I was a pretty good skier, a little better than average, but not quite an expert skier. But I grew so confident in my ski ability that I decided that I didn't need trail maps anymore, that I could find a way to navigate down any of the ski slopes in front of me. And so one day, with great disregard for the consequences of my actions, I rode the KT-22 chairlift, which takes you to some of the most expert runs, the black and double black diamond runs in Squaw Valley. Because I was convinced that there was a run, and I had seen it before, that while challenging and exhilarating, it was one that I could still navigate successfully. But remember, I wasn't bringing trail maps with me. So as I traversed the slopes, I finally got to where I thought I should be, and when I got to the edge of the run, the top of the run, I was standing at what could only be described as a cliff. (laughs) 
and it funneled into a narrow ravine packed with beautiful snow, but also with school bus-sized granite boulders. And it was steep. But believing that I could conquer anything, I decided to jump over the cornice and proceeded to link turns down the run. And I was successful for, oh, maybe about 15 seconds. And then I began to tumble towards one of the aforementioned boulders. Now, I was able to stop short of that boulder. And I stood up and brushed the snow off and checked the bindings on my skis and began again. And I got about four link turns in before, once again, I'm tumbling down this hillside. And at that point, I made the first wise decision of the afternoon. Because as I looked at the rest of the run, I realized it was getting steeper the boulders were getting bigger, and the gap between the boulders even more narrow. So I did what any prudent skier would do. I slid down the run on my derriere for about 50 yards until it got a little less intimidating and I felt comfortable to continue the run. When I got to the bottom of the hill, I had bruises, I had some slight muscle strains, and a severely damaged ego. You can choose your actions, but you can't choose the consequences of those actions. And during the course of my life, I've done my best to try to live by that mantra. In decisions great and small, and with varying degrees of success, I tried to follow that rule of life. When I'm at my best, I do. I consider the consequences of my actions not only to me, but to the people around me. And when I'm at my worst, I'm considering only the consequences of the actions on what Dave wants, not worrying about how it might affect others. In today's Gospel reading, Jesus talks about consequences. For he tells the chief priests and elders that there are consequences for their actions and their decisions, that God calls them to produce good fruit with the many gifts they have been given, and a failure to do so will be met with tragic results. Now when Jesus begins the telling of the parable to them, they hear the first words which are identical to the words in our first reading today from Isaiah, and these are learned Jewish scholars, and so they believe, oh, we know where this is going. We know this parable. This is that old canard that Isaiah shared with the people where he talks about the master building the vineyard and building the wall around it, putting the watchtower, planting it with good seed. But then the wild seed somehow creeps in. And so those learned scholars were saying, well, we know what Isaiah was talking about. He was warning the people about being corrupted by outside influences and practices, especially other religious practices that would cause the destruction of the kingdom of Israel. See, they thought they knew where Jesus was going. He puts a twist on the old story. Because he introduces new characters, he says that the vineyard own, owner, after building the vineyard, brings in tenant farmers to care for it for him while he goes off on a journey. And this tale is actually about the behavior of those tenant farmers. For we hear what happens. When the master demands the produce of the land, he sends his servants, whom they beat and torture and kill, and finally, they go so far as to kill the vineyard owner's son. And what is the consequence of their action? Well, when Jesus turns the story around to the elders and the chief priests, well, they know what should happen, right? If these people were so irresponsible as to not to take care of the father's vineyard, then they must be cast out and replaced by others that would be more responsible. Well, of course, we know who Jesus was talking about specifically in that parable. That God, of course, is the vineyard owner. And the tenant farmers were those very chief priests and elders who were corrupting the people, who were abusing the people, that were taking the wealth and the beauty of the kingdom of Israel and the vineyard for themselves. And that, of course, the son who they would kill was Jesus the Son of God. 
Sadly, they lived down to the expectations of the parable despite Jesus' warning. And we may say, well, as my good friend uh, and, and former debate coach Jerry Posner, who's written several books on conspiracy theories, case closed, right? We know the end of the story. Except for the fact that the story didn't end there. Because this parable that Jesus was using that day was not only intended for the chief priests and elders, it was intended for us. The case is not closed. The book is still open on how we, as the tenant farmers, will care for God's creation and God's kingdom as the people of God in the vineyard. You know, there's a little bit of confusion about biblical prophecy. A lot of people hear the term prophets and biblical prophecy, and they believe the purpose of that was to predict a certain future. And that wasn't the case at all. The pur purpose of prophecy in the Bible is to warn people generally against the actions and the consequences of the actions if they continue on a certain path, to try to get them to steer a new course. Now, there are some good and positive prophecies as well, too. Not all prophecy was doom and gloom. We know the prophecy that Abraham received, that his descendants would be as numerous as the stars in the sky or the sands on the seashore. And we know the prophecy about the Messiah coming from the house of David. But sadly, most of the time, the prophets were speaking God's word into a situation that needed to be improved. The purpose of the prophecy is not to condemn, but rather to give a warning that will incite better behavior, an invitation to turn around and walk the path that God calls us to. Think about it in terms, perhaps, of a good school teacher or a good business manager, right? They don't wait until the end of the year to say, oh, student, you failed. Or a good business manager does not wait till the annual performance review to say, oh, I didn't tell you any time during the course of the year, but you've really been uh, failing at your job, so bye-bye. That's the purpose of prophecy, is to give you that early warning system like a good manager or a good school teacher would do so that we can correct and tune our behavior on the proper path. So this parable today and Jesus' teaching today is all about getting our attention and inviting us to change our path if we are not planting and living the good seed of the vineyard in which we have been planted. Jesus has given us everything we need to produce good fruit. God has planted his Holy Spirit deep within every one of us. Jesus has fed us with his word and with the body and blood, his own body and blood, to nourish us for the journey. And God has given us this beautiful creation in which we live, this beautiful vineyard and these beautiful people for us to grow and bear good fruit. So today's gospel reading asks us to do the same thing that Jesus was calling the chief elders and the priests to do, is to take account of where we are in our lives right now, is to take a look and say, am I bearing that good fruit of the kingdom of God? Am I only caring about my particular selfish interests and needs, or do I care for the people of God and the body of the poor? and the homeless, and the suffering, and the immigrant, and the people who live on the margin. In a world that is so consumed with the bad seed of division and anger, am I speaking the good seed of mercy and love and an invitation to walk in the peace of Jesus Christ? In a world that takes the beautiful creation for granted? Am I ordering my actions to build up the vineyard instead of tearing it down? This is what Jesus is calling us to do with his prophetic voice in today's gospel reading. Jesus is not issuing this parable to us to condemn us or to frighten us, but as an invitation 
to change the way we behave any time it is not consonant with the Word of God in Scripture. Our God loves us. Our God loves us in the same way that my parents loved me. But God also lets us know in the same way that my dad did that there are consequences for our actions. And he doesn't want to suffer the bad consequences. He wants us to suffer the fruits of the harvest by being those who produce good fruit. As parents and godparents, the responsibility that you are taking is to guide Trinity in a life that produces good fruit. When we don't, the gospel makes very clear there are consequences. And those consequences will be far more severe than the bruises and the sprains and the damaged ego I had at the base of the mountain in Squaw Valley. God is calling us to bear good fruit. Can we live up to that call? Can we live the actions that provide those consequences for the kingdom of God? At this point, I'd like to invite Adam in Kansas and the baby Trinity to please uh, come up the altar. Please all stand. Dear brothers and sisters, let us invoke the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ for this child uh, about to receive the grace of baptism and for her parents, godparents, and all the baptized. By the mystery of your death and resurrection, bathe this child in light. Give her the new life of baptism and welcome her into your holy church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Through baptism and confirmation, make her your faithful follower and a witness to your gospel. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lead her by a holy life to the joys of God's kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Make the lives of her parents and godparents examples of faith to inspire this child. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Keep her family always in your love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Renew the grace of our baptism in each one of us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the healing grace of God may purify those who have died. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Our Mass is being offered for the people of the parish. Now we pray for our own private intentions, which we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer.
almighty God, ever living God, who sent your only son into the world to drive out from us the power of Satan, the spirit of evil, and bring the human race rescued from darkness into the marvelous kingdom of your light. We humbly beseech you to free this child Trinity from original sin, to make her the temple of your glory, and to grant that your Holy Spirit may dwell in her, true Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. May the strength of Christ, the Savior, protect you. As a sign of this, we anoint you with the oil of salvation in the name of Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The oil of catechumen. Let us pray, dear brothers and sisters, that our Lord God Almighty may bestow new life on this child by the water and the Holy Spirit. O oh God, who by invisible power accomplish a wondrous effect through sacramental science and who in many ways have prepared water, your creation, to show forth the grace of baptism. O oh God, whose spirit in the first moments of the world's creation hovered over the waters so that the very substance of water would even then take to itself the power to sanctify. O oh God, who by the outpouring of the flood foreshadowed regeneration so that from the mystery of one and the same element of water would come an end to vice and a beginning of virtue. O oh God, who caused the children of Abraham to pass dry shod through the Red Sea, so that the chosen people set free from slavery to Pharaoh would prefigure the people of the baptized. O God, whose son, baptized by John in the waters of the Jordan, was anointed with the Holy Spirit, and as he hung upon the cross, gave forth water from his side along with blood, and after his resurrection, commanded his disciples, go forth, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Look now, we pray, upon the face of your church and graciously unseal for her the fountain of baptism. May this water receive by the Holy Spirit the grace of your holy, only begotten Son so that human nature created in your image and washed clean through the sacrament of baptism from all the squalor of the life of old may be found worthy to rise to the life of newborn children through water and the Holy Spirit. May the power of the Holy Spirit, O Lord, we pray, come down through your Son into the fullness of this fund so that all who have been buried with Christ by baptism into death may rise again to life with him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Dear parents and godparents, through the sacrament of baptism, the child you have presented is about to receive from the love of God new life by water and the Holy Spirit. For your part, you must strive to bring her up in the faith so that this divine life may be preserved from the contagion, uh, contagion of sin and may grow in her day by day. If your faith makes you ready to accept this responsibility, then mindful of your own baptism, renounce sin and profess faith in Christ Jesus, the faith of the church in which children are baptized. And let me ask you the following questions. Do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? Do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? Do you renounce Satan, the author and prince of sin? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? 
Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting? And this is our faith. This is the faith of the church. We are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now, it is your will, is it your will, therefore, that Trinity should receive baptism in the faith of the church, which we have all professed with you? It is. We shall now pour water upon her for her baptism. Trinity Dawn, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Sorry, Trinity, that was too much, I think. <laughs> Let us pray. Let us anoint her with the oil of chrism. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, has freed you from sin, given you a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and, and joined you to his people. He now anoints you with the chrism of salvation so that you may remain as a member of Christ, priest, prophet, and king unto eternal life. Amen. We now clothe her with a white garment. Trinity Dawn, you have become a new creation and have clothed yourself in Christ. May this white garment be a sign of you, to you of your Christian dignity. With your family and friends to help you by word and example, bring it unstained into eternal life. Receive the light of Christ. Parents and godparents, this light is entrusted to you to be kept burning brightly so that your child, Trinity, enlightened by Christ, may walk always as a child of the light and persevering in the faith may run to meet the Lord when he comes with all the saints in the heavenly court. May the Lord Jesus, who made the deaf hear and the mute to speak, grant that you may soon receive his word with your ears and profess the faith with your lips to the glory and praise of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Let us now welcome Trinity to our faith community. Thank you. 
Pray now, my sisters and my brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be made acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your commands, and through the sacred mysteries which we celebrate with dutiful service, graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so love the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who please you throughout the ages, we may marry to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, 
Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the fate of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
utterly forget me? How long will you hide your face from me? I will sing to the Lord who has given good things to me. How long must I carry sorrow in my soul? Grief in my heart day after day. How long will my enemy triumph over me? I will sing to the Lord who has given good things to me. Look upon me, answer me, Lord my God. Give light to my eyes, lest I sleep in death. Lest my enemies say I have prevailed. Lest my foes rejoice at my downfall. I will sing to the Lord who has given good things. I trust in your faithfulness. Grant my heart joy in your help. I will sing to the Lord who has given good things to me. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I will sing to the Lord who has given Let us pray. Grant us, almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received so as to be transformed into what we consume through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. 
announcements are mercifully br you can stay standing if you want it. Oh. Okay. If you like Catholic aerobics, <laughs> you can go down and up. That's up to you. Saturday afternoon reconciliations are back. We are offering confessions on Saturdays from 3.30 to 4.30, as well as Tuesday and Thursday after daily Mass. All confessions will be in the chapel or by appointment at the parish office. This coming Sunday, October 11th, so a week from tomorrow, we will have the Rosary Coast to Coast at 4 p.m. in front of the church on Lockwood Boulevard. Please visit our website for more information. I'm gonna add one more announcement. I want your prayers for the 14 men in our diocese this morning who were ordained to the permanent diaconate. So 14 new deacons from around the diocese, trust me, they'll need your prayers. In addition, there was one of their number who contracted COVID-19 about 10 days ago. He is currently in the hospital, and I ask for your prayers for him, for a quick recovery, for his wife too, who is hopefully coming out of it as well, so that we can soon ordain him. We were supposed to have 15 this morning, and we missed having uh, Chepe Jose Perez uh, there this morning. So please keep him in prayer uh, so that he may soon be ordained as well to serve the church. And I also have one announcement. Um, our president is sick. We all know that the world knows it. Um, but of course, we are in this very highly charged environment or atmosphere of election. So, you know, all these things going on. Um, so yes, we may be Democrats, we may be Republicans, independent, but we are Americans. And above all, we are Christians, and that's what Christians do, to love and care for one another, pray for each other, not wish ill or bad things to happen to another person. So we pray for him, we pray for the First Lady, and as everybody that's been touched by this illness, I mean, this, this virus of COVID-19, so we pray that there will be an end to this and so that we can live and be normal as a society and as a people. I would like to ask, uh, Adam and Kansas to please come forward for the final blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Adam and Kansas, please bow your heads and receive this blessing. The Lord God Almighty, through his son, born the Virgin Mary, brings joy to Christian mothers, and the hope of eternal life shines forth upon their children. May he graciously bless the mother of this child, Kansas, so that as she now gives thanks for the gift of her child, she may always remain united with her in thanksgiving. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us now bless Adam, the father. May the Lord God Almighty, the giver of life both in heaven and on earth, bless the father of this child, Adam, so that together with his wife, they may be by word and example, uh, proved to be the first witnesses of the faith of their child in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. And to all of you, please bow your heads. May the Lord God Almighty, who by water and the Holy Spirit has given new birth into eternal life, abundantly bless his faithful here present, that always and everywhere they may be active members of his people, and may he bestow his peace on all who are here in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Defend us in battle. Be a protection against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. <laughs>